This house was built in 1940, and so we didn't really do a lot to it. It's not a huge house, but it had a very large backyard, and it's now kind of evolved from the children's playground to you know, having space for our extended family. You had space. What you didn't have is a lot of access. Well, honestly, that's, that's the challenge. We can't even park our cars in the garage because when they built this house, they put a wall in that made it seven and a half feet wide. So we just gated it off. And so we've never used the, this part of the driveway or the garage as a garage for that matter. Okay. And so then in back you had... Yeah, so this is the space that they had to go through with everything for the unit. So this is your construction route. Yep. <laughs> So you had to bring in a full house, basically. And it's because it's panelized, they were able to do it. But even there's, there is one, the biggest piece they have is like an I-beam that's like 20 something feet. And they literally kind of brought it in and turned it sideways and went through. But you can, I mean, you know, what's that? Four feet across, if that? Yeah. It's pretty tight. We're so happy that it really gives the feel like you're coming into a new space. You have to kind of come through that little walkway, and I think that makes it, makes it feel more private. That's really nice. Everybody always says that when they come through, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. And it's very surprising sometimes that what they're going to find after they walk through there. <laughs> because you, this is your home. Uh-huh. I was alone for like 10 years, so I decided that maybe it was time to do something your else. Your husband so died. Talked, yeah. Dad died. Dad died. So Claudia said, why don't you come and stay here? And because I wanted to be close, but I didn't want to be bothering them all the time. And this is perfect. And this guy comes comes through here a lot yeah. too. Here I visit her every day after school when I get home. I come back here yeah. and I check in with our sports games because we always watch together. Yeah. So I always come back and say, oh, it's really nice. Yeah. She always has the sweets back here. Yeah. And I have to come get yeah. So, so did you see much of your grandma before? She basically came every week, like every weekend for like a day and then left. And then since she's been here, I see her every day. And yeah. I drive her car a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> borrows my car a lot. This feels like a full-sized home. How big is it? Is it about nine? It's 910 square feet. 910 square feet, wow. So that's like a lot to fit in a backyard. Yeah. You just had to squeeze it to the limit, really, right? Yeah, it's all 910 square feet were brought through the six foot gap. That crack, 910 square feet was brought through, which is crazy, and <laughs> yeah. you still built it faster than normal, huh? They, you know, obviously prepared the site, which required a lot of, the dirt was very compacted after 80 years of baseball and trampolining on it. So they, they poured the slab. But once the uh, slab was done, the actual putting the structure up, it's not even the framing because it's panels, but it went up. In a day. Yeah, like you kind of come in and you're like, wow. Welcome to Alice's house under construction. I'm going to give you a little tour. I'm going to try to leave the chickens out of this. So we're now in the main living area. By the way, right now the ceiling looks kind of low and that's because it hangs and so they click it up into these plastic things as you can see up there, which will take it up about eight inches. So it's very airy and spacious. This is the front bedroom. As you can see all the heating and cooling and everything's up in the ceiling. This is the back bedroom. And they just trimmed everything really, really short, but that'll be coming back out so she'll have all green out of her windows. We'd been thinking about building, and it was just so challenging from a permitting, finding somebody to do it. Because everybody's like, hey, I'm going to go build a spec house. Why am I going to come do your relatively small project? We would have had to tear down the garage just because of all the code issues and things like that. And then they just passed the ADU rules, which allowed you to build an accessory dwelling unit on your property and treat it like a garage in the sense that when we were going to do the carriage house, you had to have a 15 foot setback to the property line. With the ADUs, it suddenly went to garage setbacks, which is zero. You know, it's, it fits very tightly into the back of the lot. So it's very close to the property line. So it fits in perfectly. We were able to save our old fruit trees which that's probably original to the property. And it, it, as you can see, it, we get a lot of lemonade and, and lemons for everything. And this is an apricot tree. So what worked out really nicely 
is that in the summer, this is very leafy. So it kind of shades, it shades the patio, the little deck here. And then in the winter, the leaves drop and the sun comes through. So yeah, so come on in. <laughs> You see right through. This is the first thing you notice is that the wall of green. It, it's like a wall, right? It's yeah. really pretty. Yeah. I like all the glass. Yeah. I like being able to look out, watch the animals and the birds and the, yeah. So, I mean, this really feels different though from standard. If you think of a sort of backyard granny unit, no. it's not this. No. I it's was not really, like a modern wall. Yeah, I was super happy that she was, she was, she's an artist. So I think she has a different sensibility, but she lived in, in Rancho Mirage. She had a five bedroom house that had, she'd come from Chicago, so it had a lot of antiques and a lot of art. So it was a very different feel of a house. So I wasn't sure how this was gonna work for her, but she loved it immediately. And, and she's, she, like I said, she's an artist. These are her paintings <laughs> from the 60s. What? Wow. Yeah, 60, that's from 1960. Wow, that's great. And she studied at, so the, well here. at the Art Institute in Chicago. I like the fact when the shades are down and the sun is shining, there's all pattern on the shades. It's almost like another painting. They're beautiful. And it's very quiet. It's very quiet in here. That's a thing that we noticed too very quickly because, you know, we live very close to our neighbors. We're the loud neighbors, so we're not, I'm not complaining about anybody that lives on either side of us. But when you come in here and close the doors and stuff, it is very quiet. It has a very calm vibe in here. But it's been so nice, I think, with her having it so simple. Yeah. You know, it just makes it so you don't have, you, you can keep Freeze it the simple. mind. Yeah, it does. It does. I had too much going at the other place. There's a peacefulness here that, that she really loves. In fact, I'm, I'm trying to be careful not to put too much in it. I kind of like it. So where is your stuff then? I sold it to the guy that bought the house. He loved everything. <laughs> he, <laughs> took, he took everything. <laughs> This is my old rocking chair that I had recovered. So that's, that's one of the old things. This is Swedish bathroom. Swedish. <laughs> I had to get used to that. It's a wooden floor and the Whoa. drain is underneath and there's no closure here. So you have to be stand underneath it. It's there. Years ago when we were in Italy, I had the same thing, but this, this is very similar. So you have to stand under here and be careful of not getting water everywhere, but it's, it's very nice, very nice. Easy to take care of. Lots of storage. You could plug stuff in in there. And this is my room. I love yeah. this view, actually. Right? Yeah. That's why I don't have any plants in the house. There's, I'm surrounded by green. I don't need, need to have it. That picture is Claudia as a baby oh. and myself. I've got a lot of other paintings. That, some of them won't fit, probably, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start now putting some of the other ones up. You'll see my colorless closet. Oh, oh my <laughs> For an artist, I'm not a color person. I like color. I don't like it on walls and I don't like it on me. You know, people can paint like dark green bedrooms and things that would distract me no end. I don't, it's gotta be white, black or gray. So this house really works for you then? <laughs> yes, it does. Right? It's just three colors really. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And then this is the office slash extra bedroom. There's, kind of do you use this? Kind of uh, my grandson slept here when her house was full. This was his to old twin bed. Yeah. My daughter stayed here after she came out of the hospital. So she was in here. And then there's a, my office, lots of office stuff ah. there. And wedding, my old wedding pictures of myself and my husband, it's my daughter. Like the, do you even use all this storage? No, I've got empty drawers. So this is <laughs> office supplies. Oh. What do I have in here? I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, parts to the ovens and yeah. boxes of paint, my paints and what's in here? Let's see. Oh, here's a lot of the stuff that I'm going to hang up that I love. So you kept, you kept some stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got lots of my family pictures. Taking you back to the late myself. 60s, early 70s. And that was where? In Chicago? In Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. We lived in a very nice suburb in Chicago. It was yeah. very pleasant. Yeah. Beautiful. So you really were in bigger houses? Oh yeah. 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 Always. In like... Well, not when I was growing up. <laughs> no, I lived in a very small house with a lot of people. <laughs> really? Yes. Where? In Chicago. Well, um, my grandparents, my grandparents died at a very young age, and so my mother, who was a young bride, brought her seven brothers and sisters to live with us when I was a very small child. But you know what? It was the most fun in the whole world. And you got used to the idea of sort of a multi generational. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be more like that. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
But it's nice. She's really spent a lot more time with her grandkids than, than you have in, in forever. Yeah. Right? Now that yeah. you've moved back here. Yeah. But, um, but I don't think you've missed anything. Have you missed like, any of your like things? Stuff. No. I, that's the thing is the whole time she's been here, I don't think I can Is remember there? once that she said, oh, I wish I had my... So what came with the house? And you're saying it's a lot built in. Oh, all the, all the appliances are, are all built in. You know, and then, and then a full-size full size oven. Microwave. Big microwave. Oh, yeah. oh, there is some stuff stored in the microwave. <laughs> the refrigerator, we that's our favorite. You know, it is. Too, right? You know, with kind of with drawer storage. Oh, yeah. For the freezer. Because she was used to a traditional classic house, she wanted a little bit of an entryway, like a, a, a space that you, you're not walking right into the space. So, you know, internet, lighting, the washer dryer is here. And then she has her pantry and... I think I, I tucked some things in there, just getting them off, getting <laughs> them off the... Right wow, Alice, this is going to look really... Boy, hmm. They're going to see your anchovies and everything. I mean, it's... You didn't have to add new septic or... No, you know what's funny? The, the biggest thing we had to do, the drainage, and we didn't... We have uh, rain barrels. Essentially, if you look down the side, you can see. Each of those captures rainwater off the roof. And then we have a whole system that we then can use it for the garden, which is great here in Southern California where water is an issue. From here, you really see how it fits the spot. Like, so yeah. are you at the limits of the setbacks? Yeah, there's a utilities thing here. So I think we're five feet away from the utility line. Okay. And that was it. So all that rainwater then can be used? For... Yeah, and it's hundreds of gallons. Where does it go? So it, what it does, so this, these are full, right now, because of all the rain we've had, these are full of water and they're all connected into this pipe. This is a double, this, this actually we can get fresh water, so we can use this regular city water, but there's a switch over there that when we do the switch, um, then it draws off of the tanks. So like in the summer, we just draw those down and it's, I think it's 600, 800 gallons, wow. which is quite a bit. And even in the front, is this as far forward as you could have gone? Could you have made it, like added an extra couple feet to make bigger bedrooms? Yeah, I mean, we could have gone bigger, but that's what worked for us cost-wise. But it's also, we wanted, it was things like, we wanted to save the lemon tree because we use it. I mean, it sounds silly. You can buy lemons anywhere, but right. <laughs> we use every single lemon on this tree every year. And the same thing with the apricots that the squirrels and birds don't get, we, we eat. We get our eggs here from uh, the, uh, the hen house that my engineer son designed. It looks very rustic, but it's, this was all catted out. And then, and then we grow tons of greens. And so I'm about to start planting. So that's planting. you. This is your garden. Yeah, this is me. You know, this is where Al, it's, this is Alice. This is Alice's house. This is my garden. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of the garden. But what's, but what's great with Alice, what, honestly, what she does is, you know, she comes in in the morning and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate because I have my chickens available. You know, and these, these are gone to seed. This is bok choy. And I can come in and Alice will do this and you throw it into the chickens and they get very happy to have extra greens. But I grow like hundreds of, I, I literally grew hundreds of pounds of tomatoes here last year to make tomato sauce for the family and you know this is my arugula that's all gone to seed but we grow you know we have arugula bok choy this is cilantro you know all the ingredients for guacamole I just need an avocado tree and I would be all set it's nice though because you didn't really give up anything so you you still have the garden you still have your garage you still have yeah it's I mean it, it, it feels like just such an efficient use of the space that that's the thing it's just nothing wasted you know it's like it's there we, we actually like the kind of the contrast with the modern and then with our tr very traditional kind of Dutch colonial house. And, and honestly, I mean, the, the cost of doing it too, just, you know, uh, relative to what we would spend, if she had said, oh, I'm going to sell my house in Palm Springs and buy, you know, a condo in LA or an apartment nearby, it's night, I mean, orders of magnitude. I mean, you can't it's just, so the land's here. We have our, our land. That's the key thing, right? But to rent the property, and this is all because of the ADU code and everything, this is technically a rental property. Like I have to fill out lots of forms and there is some bureaucracy, which I don't love. But, you know, we can legally rent this unit. In this neighborhood, we could generate significant income. Plus your, your house has more square feet now. Yeah, we increased our livable square footage. So, and, and with like my, uh, you know, I don't know how many... 18 year olds you see that you know come and see their grandma every day and watch games with her and you know bring her ice cream to to eat you know things like that
it's just so nice for her that she has her, her space. It's super peaceful. It doesn't feel like you're in the middle of LA.